Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, I'm gonna show you my fully kitted out, fully pimped out King Song S22 Pro. So, let me tell you more about it. Whee! Riding in the forest with a gimbal and a mirrorless camera. Let's see how that works out. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad you clicked on the video. Maybe you are curious about wheeling, maybe about off-roading, I don't know. But in this episode, I'm gonna tell you about what I did to the Kingsong S22 Pro in order to make it work for me. Now, this is a setup that might work for you or might also not work depending on what you need. So I will also give you a rating to, oh, it's heavy, <laughs> to like how I think how useful the accessory that I'm talking about is. So I think I need to turn up the brightness a little bit. Now, out of the box, the Kingsong S22 is already a very usable wheel, especially with the new rollers. I mean, there's iterations and iterations of rollers, but uh, if you have a good distributor where you bought the wheel at, you should not have any problems with exchanging them if you have a Kingsong S22 Pro. Now, if you have the old Kingsong S22 non-Pro, then, well, you need to buy accessories in order to make the suspension work. Um, well, work better, smoother. But even out of the box, Shibby Time is still using the Kingsong S22 and, oh, we're out of the forest. It's kind of nice too. Uh, Shibby Time is still using a stock S22, not pro, and he does the most massive jumps ever. And Nadia, you see girl, which is a uh, rider, which kind of, I can learn a lot from in terms of jumps and, well, actually, in general, I can learn a lot from her. Um, she also uses a stock Kingsong S22. Now, I don't know if it's a pro or non-pro, uh, but it has a stock pad. So you can live with all of the stock accessories that you have on this wheel. But if you want to make it a bit more personalized, if you want to make it a bit more you, and if you need just a bit more functionality, then let me tell you what I did to this wheel. Alright, so let's start with all of the accessories that I have from Nylonov. Now, I have a brake pad now from Kinetic Pads and a acceleration, well, a jump pad on the bottom, which is located, located the other way around. Now, obviously, um, when it comes to pads, you can have your per personal preference. I really just like those because they're squishy and nice to my legs. Uh, however, the front pad seems to be 
just jumping up slightly too much than I would like, so I will see how that is. And probably you're asking yourself, hey Adam, you don't have an acceleration pad. Now this is a thing I'm experimenting about right now. I saw some posts by UC girl, Nadia, where she was jumping those huge jumps without an acceleration pad. I was like, wait a minute, maybe I'll give it a shot. I was riding fairly long without pads when it comes to my, you know, um, rider progression. So I wanted to see how it is like, and I freaking love it. So the biggest benefit I have from not having those top pads, but you know, I'll see how it will develop over, you know, a longer period of time, is that finally I can really bend my knees on landings. I can bend my knees on turns, on, you know, bigger bumps. Uh, when I want to accelerate, I just go down on my knees. And apart from that, I also have my heel locked so I can actually lift my heel. And by that, I will accelerate as well. So uh, this is my new pad setup. I'm really loving it. And yeah, I suggest you can give it a try because all of those things are modular. Maybe, maybe it'll be something for you. From Nylon Elf, I also have the fairing plates here. Uh, it's very useful if you want to mount your pads further than the body of the Kingsong S22, because as you can see here, those pads are protrude, uh, those fairings are protruding in front of the shell compared to the Grizzla fairings, but Grizzla fairings are also perfectly nice. And they also, as you can see, protrude way far in the back. So fairings are awesome if you want to mount any sort of custom uh, pads. Now from Nylonov, last thing here, I also have those uh, foot plates with 200 millimeter studs. Those are, this is the bigger version. Let me focus. This is the bigger version of those studs, so I just gripped the wheel well. <laughs> Shibby still jumps with the stock foot plates, so you know, you can do it and you can be awesome. Uh, I just like this a bit more in, you know, rainy weather uh, in, uh, and just to have a bit more grip on my shoes. So, yep, yeah, that's that. In this vicinity, just really quick, I have also a small shred light because those lights are blinding. I might get some covers for those lights. Uh, didn't print them out yet, but this may be a better solution just, than just having a shred light here mounted on a GoPro mount. You can, you know, use any shred light, I mean light, but just keep in mind those lights are still very blinding even with those small plastic bits. And I don't have any sort of custom handle yet. This handle seemed to uh, work nicely for now but maybe in the future I'll get something from Grizzla or any other manufacturer. And I also do have those uh, furniture foam pieces here, just to have a bit more nice squishy grip between my calves. Really, I, I just put this on every single one of my wheels. Right, but I forgot about the rating of those uh, accessories. Uh, pads, depends on your preference. I want, don't give it like a one to 10 rating. I really like different pads. Maybe you can use the stock ones. The stock ones make your wheel also a lot wider. So, so I would give the pads a, I like it a lot out of 10, but you could still use the stock ones. When it comes to foot plates, it's a recommendation if you have the money because they're like 200 euro. Um, you can use the stock ones still, maybe put some grip tape on them, modify them somehow, but the nylon of ones are just out of the box, amazing. So if you feel like spending 200 euro, get them for sure. Fairing plates, well this is sort of connected to the pads. If you want to get pads, get the fairings because without the fairings, you won't have enough room or will, you will be just very squished on the Kingsong S22. And furniture foam, highly recommend. 10 out of 10 furniture foam, every single one of your UCs. <laughs> Thank you.
But oh no, 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 this is not the end of my mods because maybe you didn't know this because this tire looks very similar to the stock one. This is a very different tire. This is a Duro 80, 90 by 14. And this tire is wider. This tire is stiffer. This tire I like a lot more than the stock tire on the Kingsong S22. Now there is a problem with this tire though because Kingsong designed this you see like pretty much oh, like, let me do that. like all of their EUCs in a very tight way. Every component is close to the other. So if you look here, you can see uh, the element of the suspension. I can have it just two below the bottom right now because otherwise this thing will hit my tire. And actually when I bent my rim on my King Song, which you can see here on the stock tire, which is a lot more like a sock, um, I had a, um, I, I was running the suspension in the highest setting and this thing scratched the tire. So you can actually blow your tire if you have a dent and you make sure if you have it in the highest setting with your stock tire, just to, you know, make sure that there's no sort of scratches on, on the tire here. So I can easily use the, the this setting and this is the highest one I can use, but more on that later because I also have a custom um, spring. Um, yeah, just keep it in mind that you, you get some benefits of a better turning, better grip in my opinion, better, you know, safety against uh, casing the wheel or just, you know, curbs, etc, etc. This tire is awesome. One of my favorite off-road tires I've ever mounted to any EUC. But yeah, this is the trade-off. So let's talk about the spring, shall we? I got a custom spring from Ho EUC. Check out his site uh, below. And this spring is a 950 pound spring. So especially in the lower settings that I have here, this works a lot better for me. I feel like there's a little less travel because there's just more, I think less room in between the, I don't know, windings or something. Uh, but it is a lot stiffer. It feels great. And I don't feel like I'm bottoming it out on every jump. I can do heavy sends right now. And this just holds it in, pr in place. I don't think the spring is yet on uh, the site, howuc.com, but it will be soon. And I also added a bunch of preload here. You can see it hopefully, a bunch of preload because uh, then this EUC is just stiffer and I can feel it better in turns. Yeah, I, I really like how this EUC became um, like maneuverable and fun with uh, this upgrade. So um, tire, highly recommend, but if you're lighter, because then you can use the stock spring. But the tire, if you have a bigger spring, yeah, highly recommend both. So I do recommend this combination of things, but you might be also a different kind of rider. Maybe you want to use the full suspension travel in the highest setting, then you can't use this, uh, this tire and you can just leave it with the stock spring or get this one as well. And you have best of both worlds. You have more travel and a heavier shock. So I give the spring a, if you do jumps, then get it out, out of 10. And the tire, if you like carving and having more grip, then get it out of 10. Furthermore, if you do a lot of jumps, make sure to check those bolts, this bolt, this bolt every once in a while. And I mean like every 50 or 100 kilometers if you don't put a lot of Loctite on it. Just Loctite them up and maybe then every 100, 200 kilometers because those get loose. There's some sort of like this sort of action, not only <laughs> this way action on this geometry of this UC. Kinsey made a nice video about it and those bolts just get loose. So probably one of my bolts got loose and it broke after a big send, just like exploded. But it might've been also just the fact that it has been already like 
screwed itself out a bit. So now I have just M10 by 30 millimeter bolts here with a big nut, just like mine. And then I will just need to put more Loctite in uh, because um, yeah, currently this is just moving out by itself. And uh, yeah, I don't want that to happen. I want my nuts to stay in place. So I'll just put more Loctite on them and then hope for the best with the big shake hitch that I have going on. So I give the bigger bolts a, if you do jumps and hardcore off-roading, then get them out of 10. They're, they're cheap to replace. It's just like no problem. They're more durable as well. I also once had the nut come off and it still works. Like you shouldn't do that obviously, but this is just a bit better than the bolt breaking and you just casing the wheel. Luckily nothing did happen to me, but you know, you never know. Lastly, the last upgrade I have here, or maybe actually two more upgrades. Um, I have the rollers from Honing Ning, which are not the stock rollers, which uh, were on this wheel. Um, the stock roller started making some noise after 400 kilometers. Now I could, you know, just try and see how it is with newer iterations of King Song, but I just got them for free, just like the spring. So I said, hey, why not? Let's check them out. And they work brilliantly. I have almost 100, 1000 kilometers now on the wheel. 600 of them on those new springs and even with hardcore off-roading I just came back yesterday from uh, from a trip to smaller Poland which is around Krakow the Voivodeship and we were just blasting there and everything works pretty great no noises as well no noises maybe let's check noise sound <laughs> noise check those are $200 as well, so it's pretty expensive. And I guess if you are a suspension aficionado, then you can try them out and see how this works. Oh, people. Um, but if you feel like you just go around the city, you don't mind it so much with the stock rollers, then just keep those or upgrade from the stock, very stiff um, sliders without rollers to the rollered ones, roller, roller ones. To top it all off for all bigger adventures, and I'm actually very pleased with this wheel now because it performed so well in, uh, in the mountains. Um, I have a charger from also from Honing Ning. It's pretty expensive, it's $300, uh, but it's a 18 amp charger, so zero to 18 amp adjustable charger. I have two ports splitting off into uh, the, the wheel so I can charge. I don't know how fast, I usually charge at around nine, 10 amps just to not stress the battery too much, but it makes me charge this wheel in like two hours and recharge from 30 to 80, 90% in like an hour, which is like, or 40 minutes, just, just like a pit stop on the way. So this worked out very, very well. It's a very loud charger, but I, I, I think it's worth it, especially for longer trips. I also have a adapter now for type two, which is for electric cars, electric motorcycles. And then I can charge whatever speed I want with any wheel actually, because um, uh, there is also a set of different connectors for various wheels in uh, this um, How EUC charger, which is actually a Huawei charger, but uh, encased or adjusted to work. Uh, with uh, with EUCs. So yeah, I, I really love that as well. So I guess these are all of the mods I have on this wheel. Uh, feel free to say what mods you have on a Kingsong S22. What do you like? What do you don't like about it? And um, if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Whoa. Let's go! Whoa.